Reading a heavy physics book can seem very intimidating at first. Here is how to make it easier. First, you need to know what sections of the textbook are assigned. This may be found already on the syllabus or mentioned in assignments. When in doubt, ask your instructor in advance. Reading takes a lot of time, so you need to pace yourself. It is to your benefit to look ahead and flip through the pages so that you know how many pages you should be reading each week to keep up the pace. For example, if in this case you are on topic 5, you should look at the textbook for the assigned sections how much you need to read in those two weeks. Do not assume all sections are the same length. In this case, if we compare with the assigned sections and add up the number of pages, we get that we have to read about 10 pages worth from one chapter and maybe about 15 pages from another. If we take a look at one of these chapters, notice it might already list for you the important concepts you will be learning about. This can give you a checklist for later when you review whether you can correctly define and use each of these concepts. Some people at this point are able to just proceed and read the text, while for others it might actually be a good idea to quickly turn to the back of the chapter to see the summary of the uh, underlying principles mentioned in the checklist and major concepts, including being able to understand the relevant equations involved. As you read through the text, your physics book will highlight the first appearance of these concepts and if you read around it, it is where you will find the definition. Reading around the same area, you will get more clarification and perhaps even examples for you to get an idea how it is used in physics. Especially when many variables are related, it is useful to check out the figures next to the text to keep track of all of them. That will help you keep track of what the equation derivations mean. Equations are often followed up by problem-solving examples. These will give you sample text reading of the problem, interpretations, and step-by-step -step derivation of the result.
keep in mind that despite the derivations by the book, it is bad practice to just take the final answer and plug it into your homework problems. Your instructor will probably ask you to retrace the steps of the derivations from first principles before using the derived equations in your problems. Do not assume that just because a problem is termed conceptual, it is easy or you can skip over it. This can lay foundations and give you clues on many of your homework problems and exam questions. At the back of each chapter, there will be practice problems and questions. Depending on the exact textbook used, they might be organized by section of topic, as well as type of problem. In this example, C denotes conceptual problems, N denotes numeric ones. Even when specific problems are not assigned from the book, you can practice on these in preparation for your exams. It is common that the earlier problems of each, each section are the easiest ones to warm up on before moving on to higher number more difficult problems. It is common practice for textbook writers that for odd numbered problems, you get the final answer in the back of the book without uh, the derivations, but it will give you a good check whether you understand the problem solving. There is additional reference material in the book on the inside covers that can help you in case you get lost in, say, unit conversions. There is also appendix for some relevant mathematics in case you forgot. Learning to read a science textbook takes time and patience. You will only get better at it with practice. Schedule time several times a week for this practice. Also keep in mind that to best understand the concepts, you should read first, at least in an overview form before attending lecture. After lecture, you should finish the rest of the reading to solidify your understanding. While solving homework problems, refer back to the examples. It is recommended to read the example multiple times until you understand the steps. Finally, to reinforce your concepts, you are welcome to seek 
outside sources such as educational videos. Keep in mind, however, that these videos are not substitutes for your reading nor for attending lecture. They are merely there as a summary reinforcement for your problem solving. Finally, when still confused, you are strongly encouraged to come to office hours, seek tutoring services, or form your own study groups.